everyone likes a vacation in a warm climate. But how about a trip to two planets that are as hot as hell? If you were walking on the surface of Mercury, you'd need one heck of a spacesuit. Mysterious Mercury appears lifeless and desolate, but hidden deep inside is a clue to a different past. The smallest planet made out of the densest stuff with the most lunar-like landscape at its surface and yet uh, generating magnetic field. It's a planet that's part furnace, part freezer. As you get to the higher latitudes on Mercury, the ice is contained in places where literally the sun never shines. But it's nearby Venus, goddess of love, who will really melt your heart and crush your defenses at the same time. So this is the hell, real hell. Once the twin of Earth, something went wrong here, terribly wrong. At some point, Venus had an ocean's worth of water that is now gone. What turned Venus from paradise to pressure cooker? I like to use that word alien with Venus. I think Venus is the most alien planet we have. Could this really be our future? The ultimate fate of the Earth is to look like Venus looks today. And here, on our own doorstep, there is possibly the greatest survival story of all. There's some speculation that Venus might actually still harbor life, even though it is such a hostile place. There has never been a better time to boldly go where no human has gone before. To follow in the footsteps of our robot pioneers and visit the planets of the solar system. Ever wanted to be an astronaut? Imagine it was you who was heading to the hot zone of the two inner planets. Where would you go? What would you see? And how would you survive? And lift off. The latest robotic missions have revealed more about these worlds than ever before. Tranquility base Armed with this new knowledge, think of this as your personal travel guide to our near neighbors. As the planet closest to the sun, Mercury is the ultimate summer vacation. Step out of your spacecraft and sizzling temperatures are guaranteed for a day that lasts three months. And when the sun finally does set, the nightlife begins with a unique cosmic light show. This is one pockmarked planet worth taking a closer look at. Like our moon, Mercury is covered in craters. at the moon or Mercury without seeing impact craters. It's a good thing Brett Denevi loves a big impact. As a member of the imaging team on the current messenger mission to Mercury, she sees a lot of them. What's exciting for me is I get to be one of the first people to see these images of you know, places on the planet that we've never seen before. Most people come here to Meteor Crater in Arizona to see a big hole in the ground. Brett's desires run deeper. If you want to study impact craters on Mercury, this is the best place to come. I mean, this is the most well-preserved impact crater on Earth. It's, it's the closest you're going to get. Wonder what it would be like to take a stroll on Mercury? You can walk around Meteor Crater in about an hour. But on Mercury, you wouldn't know when to stop. Craters here stretch as far as the eye can see. 
If you were sitting on a crater on Mercury, this crater would be a pretty, a pretty young one. And you'd also have craters on top of that one. You'd have craters all the way down. I mean, even like just the little rocks here would have smaller craters on them. And then, you know, you'd probably be within a big giant crater too that you wouldn't even be able to recognize. Apollo 11, this is Houston, radio check over. Although no human has ever set foot on Mercury, we have a pretty good idea of what you would see. We copy it down, Eagle. If you were walking around on the surface of Mercury, it would look outwardly a lot like the moon. When you step onto Mercury, you step into a world with no real atmosphere, where the sky is as black as night and a blaze in sunshine and where a drive is an off-road trek through at least a three billion year old battlefield. Big craters, small craters, craters everywhere. So that's your first impression looking at it. Like the moon, Mercury took most of its battering early on. A silent witness to the dawn of time, it's been undisturbed by a single drop of rain or breath of wind ever since. For the most part, uh, the surface of Mercury has been frozen in time for periods of billions of years. And you may say that's boring, uh, but not necessarily. It's a good thing because these planets such as Mercury and the Moon preserve a record of what was going on during this critical early period of the solar system's formation, and so we can basically study it there because it's laying right on the surface. Every stone and crater of this pockmarked world has the potential to gaze back four and a half billion years. But counting these craters is just the first challenge when it comes to revealing a planet like Mercury. It's always um, low on the horizon, so it's hard to point a telescope at it from Earth. It's hard to get into orbit around Mercury because it's so close to the sun. For that reason, Mercury remains one of the most underexplored planets in our solar system. Many aspects, like its geological past, are a mystery. But some things we do know this lonely planet has a strange sense of keeping time. Once you arrive, you'll have to reset your watch for a time zone like no other. It has such an unusual orbit and rotation period. The days and nights um, are, are very strange. A Mercurian year is just 88 Earth days long thanks to its quick sprint around the sun. But it rotates so slowly, a single day takes much longer. The day on Mercury is more like half a year on Earth's terms. Although known to us since ancient times, for thousands of years, we had little idea what the planet really looked like. Then, in 1974, NASA's Mariner 10 sends back the first ever glimpses of its surface. Pictures can be transmitted to tracking stations and on to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. As Due to Mercury's uh, slow rotation and its elliptical orbit around the sun, when it flew by three times, it saw the same half of the planet. So we've really only seen something like 45% of the planet at relatively low resolution. Hidden in these fuzzy black and white postcards for over 30 years are clues that point to one of Mercury's biggest puzzles. It's been shrinking. Mercury doesn't have plate tectonics like the Earth does, so we know that Mercury's crust is under a lot of compression. And the only way you can really do that is if the planet shrank. And so you can think of it as the incredible shrinking planet. As Mariner 10 flies past, the mist deepens. The spacecraft detects a vast iron core hidden inside. 
Mercury's core makes up about 60% of the planet by mass. It's about twice as big as Earth. Why would it have such a huge core for such a small planet? Some people think there was a huge impact. It kind of stripped off a lot of the planet, and now what we're seeing is just the remnant of a once bigger planet. What's left is a planet load of iron.